become as an internet or WeChat entrepreneur, maybe there's a new term now, WeChat yeah, entrepreneur. WeChat entrepreneur. Right? <laughs> as a WeChat entrepreneur, um, and all the changes that are happening in the market here all the time, right? the speed of business in China yeah. in general, but specifically in the tech area, mm. like, so all these new sort of, whether it's new types of mini apps mm. or new ways of integrating mm. mini apps, um, how do you keep up to date? How do you keep up to speed with everything that's going on? Um, how do I keep up the speed? Well, I have to say that we don't really keep up the speed. I think one of the most important things that I learned and also my business partners kind of dragged me down because I am a really fast person. When something happened, I react and then really fast and I want to like always be the fattest and then uh, I, wanna, I used to want the company grow so fast in a certain amount of time but I realized that because I also along the way I met a lot of other entrepreneurs I feel like sometimes the faster you become the more disaster and troubles you're going to bring to your life or the business so sometimes it's very important to not really act inside because outside is changing so that actually, especially when outside the uh, environment change, for example, maybe more WeChat policy and whatever, you got so anxious, you, you want to change this and change that. And a lot of people, a lot of other entrepreneurs, they just change your core at all. So for us, we are on this edge to, to, to change. Because like there is a certain moment in our business there are a lot of uh, investors like talk to us. We're like, oh, we're gonna get a big capital. We're gonna grow so fast in the, the three-year plan, ten-year plan. But then I realize we realize that everything, every choice behind there's a cost, right? There's no free pie like there. So for us, we we were facing this like choice. If we take that big capital, how the content, how our company gonna become? So we. So for me, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing now, create a content, you know, do the personal growth. When I self-transform, I share the story. I think I'm a good storyteller. I, I influence people. That's something I really enjoy. But if we take that capital that time, it's going to become a capital game. As a CEO in a company, I probably won't have time to do the uh, creative content anymore. I'm going to be <laughs> like uh, you know, socialize with a lot of like investors and uh, uh, not doing the things I really like anymore. And also, I know also know a lot of other like um, startups because they take the capital too early, and they are really bring the business to some like some the directions are orange like totally different from their original heart. So I think that's a big, big problem. So you said like how to keep up the speed. I said like no matter outside environment, how they change, if the core is there, just don't panic and then you don't have to react so fast, you know, just the things up and down. As long as the core doesn't change, it's stable there, you, know, you have nothing to worry about. Because even outside, you know, the technology change, it's just a platform change. It's just the form change. The inside never change. Before the Facebook, now the WeChat. The content doesn't change. Before the books, now the ebooks. And what change, right? Nothing changed. So for people who are looking at the market from outside and they're thinking about, you know, they see China growing really quickly, they see the opportunities, they see the the, the tech ecosystem here, um, and they kind of think like, how do they take advantage of that? But at the same time, there's, there's a lot of people in the market, stuff moves quickly here, and it's highly competitive. Um, so what would you say, in your opinion, are some of the untapped opportunities that still exist here that people mm. can tap into? Well, for me, like, I think Western country, they definitely have so much good content, so much like design and, and everything, and there are definitely so many opportunities to, to they can bring in, in China. But the thing is that I think um, they really need to understand uh, coming from a, a, a branding like insights background I think they really need to deeply understand what Chinese really think what's really in their mind you know what's the insights behind because people could think differently right if we're talking about women for example um, I told you earlier that our target consumer are people who are serious about to change but interestingly our data 
We have students from 18 years old to 48 years old. But interestingly, the highest peak paid customers are women in 29. So, you know, like if for Western people, they will be wondering, oh, why are women 29 are paying the most, right? But in China, as a Chinese, you know clearly when you're hitting the 30, but not 30 yet, how anxious you're gonna be, right? If you're not getting married, you don't have kids, oh my God, is this like <laughs> the most anxious thing in the world? You're gonna die, the parents are gonna kill you if you're not getting married. So the anxiety come from that, the eager to, to change or to, to, it's coming from that. So if you tackle those people, you provide the products exactly what they want, of course they're gonna pay it. Of course they're gonna be your loyal customers. So I think no matter what kind of customers you are targeting, you have to understand insights here. I think that's one of the most important things. So how can people begin to get a better understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a certain amount of like, it's just part of your culture. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you went abroad for a while and then you came back. Yeah. Um, how can people begin to get an insight into Chinese c consumer thinking? I think one of the things as every entrepreneur needs to learn is the marketing research. You know, like you buy, uh, you know, um, I think learn a little bit of marketing research or hire some professionals to help you to, to uh, based on your products, to, to do a certain target consumer insights research are so important. Because otherwise you can do, you know, like for us, you need to understand why and then, and, and then insights first and, may, and then come up with a, a product. But most of the time people are doing in the wrong way. In another way, I have the product first, how am I gonna fit in this market? But it might be this product doesn't really make any sense, you know, no, maybe nobody needs it. But even if you already have the products, doing the marketing research and understanding insights can really adjust maybe your brand image or, you know, how you promote your brand. So it really depends on with how to start doing it, I think, and learn some marketing research tools, you know, like you interview me now or you talk to the people, it could be your target consumer to understand what they really uh, need in their life. Well, in the end, I think it might be just personal skills, you know, to, to see and to listen, to understand. That's very important. For someone who's coming into the China market today, uh, without experience, without uh, whether it's running their own business or maybe even experience in China at all, uh, and they're coming in fresh, um, or perhaps even they've been here for a little while but they've never run their own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what what advice would you have for people in that position? Where it's like, how do they even start? How do they even start? You mean like a startup? Like yeah, it could be. So for example, if they're looking at China, they're seeing the growth here and they're thinking about how they can le leverage that growth to build something themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a startup. It could be building their personal brand or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Um, how do they make that transition from either being abroad to coming into China and starting something up or being here and working here and thinking about how do I make that transition? Mm -hmm. like one of the interesting things you talked about earlier was was like not going black or white, right? Mm. Like not just dropping what you yeah. have, right? Um, but a little bit more specifically about about China mm -hmm. and about starting here. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for someone in, in that position? Um, so we were talking about not black and white to start with lean and small. The other thing I was talking about to really understanding the the local culture and the people, uh, the consumer here, and and then. Um, I think it's very important. I think I still want to emphasize on the understanding the market demand is very important because in Western country the 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 tools are are a lot the professional tools especially you know like mo most uh, marketing research firm that I know a Western co like company and then they have so much this kind of strong and professional tools to understand for Chinese I think. Uh, one of the things we lack of, except, um, you know, let's not talk about creative side. The thing is, like, for example, the marketing research thing, I don't see many Chinese people are doing that. You know, China are some place do not really have that much rules. <laughs> There's things there, the demand there, I quickly come up with products I sell. I think for a Westerner, if you have a better sense of, of like, this kind of professional tools or the way that you can uh, uh, doing the marketing research and then understand insights. I think that's gonna help a lot. You know, it's it's not like mm, otherwise it's it's very 
difficult because we're talking about the speed here. We never compare with Chinese. <laughs> you never compare compare with Chinese. Chinese are always fast. There's a thing I start to sell. I make a bunch of money. Done, right? And then but for Westerner, that you if you can, you know, I I don't think. The advantage is the speed, but more maybe professional or just more like uh, serious tools and professional tools that you can bring here. It seems very related also to the concept you were talking about of having the core, mm -hmm. right? like not trying to do things too quickly or reacting to the market, yeah. but having something solid, right? Yeah. The market will move around you, will change yeah. around you, the tech will change, yeah. but if you have that core the then, tools, right? uh, and the yeah. tools to be able to measure what exactly that core should be, yeah. then it's, it's, it's not about doing it quickly, it's about saying, well, what's my longer term? Yeah. Where do I actually want to go with exactly. this? And how can I use those tools and get a better understanding of right. the population to deliver to them exactly. what they need? And uh, if they know Chinese will be a, a plus, right? <laughs> because it's not an English com uh, country. And if they can have, what if they can like find someone they trust, like me, find my partner, you know, like who understand deeply understand the Chinese market will be fantastic as well. This is a very specific question, but for for Chinese people who are abroad, who have maybe studied abroad and started working abroad, and they're seeing China grow and they want to come back into the market here. Um, what advice would you have for people in that position? Uh, should they come here and get a job? Should they try, like your business partner, to find someone here and sort of start developing a business from the outside? Mm. What would you recommend? So I think uh, China right now, maybe in the next 10 years, will be so many startups because I think it's very new for China. China is like the new Silicon Valley in Asia. I mean, as I was, I was talking about in, a, in, in this interview, I was. I was telling them that I think right now, this age in China, as long as you have like a dream or a good ideas, uh, and as long as you start doing it, you're gonna make it because there's so many opportunities, and then you, you know, like people, people are ready to have them. People are so willing to take them. It's different compared with 10 years ago, you know. And then for this generation, especially born after 80s like a lot of Chinese and also the Chinese been aboard and they want to come back. I think they are full of dreams, they are full of ideas. I mean, they can definitely, for those people who live aboard, they, they've been explored like so many great ideas, the tools, the maybe even the creative side, they can definitely bring it back. And I think for them, the advantage is that they know the Chinese market, they have the insights, they understand the culture, they speak Chinese, and also they've been aboard, they, they saw everything there. It's just, it's even easier for them to start in China. No matter if you want to find a job here or you want to create something here, I think it's a massive amount of opportunities here for them. So if people want to find out more about your work, um, they want to check out your content, uh, how can they find you? Um, and then also if they'd like to reach out to you personally, what's the best place to find you online? And, uh, and what kind of people might be reaching out? I, I think um, if, if they want to reach me out, they can find me on my official account. They can leave me a message there, I reply, I read them every day. It's called uh, a San Shi Yi Shen. it's our university official account. But I have uh, my personal social media account, it's called uh, Kai Li De San Shi Yi Shi Yen. So on that platform, we do a lot of fun 30 days experiment. It's still going on and then that's actually where we drive the first uh, traffic into our platform. So thank you so much for coming Thank in today. you for having me I today. I really appreciate the time. Thank you, thank you.